The pigeons are generally released early in the morning, in clear weather. Conveyors must know the weather on the flight line. If the weather is bad, the releases are postponed. All pigeons from one organization must be released at the same time. A controller attends the operations and reports on their smooth running. Release times are communicated to regional federations and announced by local radio stations. In long distance races, if the distance is too great to cover in one day, the pigeons are released later. This way, they do half the trip the first day and the rest the next day. In this video, we will explain to you what are the effects of delayed releases on the state of health of the pigeons. Delayed releases are generally long distance competitions of 800 kilometers or more. The releases are between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. approximately. Many pigeon fanciers find this method to be useless. Well, everyone has their own opinion. They offer the ethics and the sporting value of the pigeon. They prefer a pigeon that flies everything in one day. What could be more beautiful than a race of 300 to 900 kilometers where the pigeons are there the same day at home, that they gave everything to come back? The responsibility for releases is always heavy. As an example, most presidents say, but fortunately, there is good weather, no problem, and bad weather, no problem either, we wait. It's between the two that it goes wrong. Should we, shouldn't we? First point on the intellectual level, it is necessary to consult the various persons in charge for various titles, whether forecaster, administrators, sportspersons in charge, to discuss with them, then to know to resist the pressures which they are positive or negative. It is not easy. In the final decision, the weather plays a key role. But what most fanciers don't know is that pigeon weather is not everyone's weather. The elements involved in the decision to let go or not to let go are fourfold. Temperature, wind speed and direction, visibility and humidity. Pigeons orient themselves poorly at temperatures below 7 to 8 degrees Celsius. At the start of the season, it is best to wait until mid-morning until this minimum temperature is reached. The compared durations of the contests released at the same place with a difference of one or two hours in April are very significant. But right now it's hot weather. These high heats have two related effects. Rapid dehydration of the pigeons. Need to drink often. Dehydration creates thirst. In the basket, this is arranged on the express condition that the pigeon knows how to drink there. If the old pigeons have no problem, the same does not apply to the beginners. Drinking basket training is therefore as important as flying and orienteering training. Then there is the normal dehydration during the flight which, for the long cross-country stages, requires watering in the tides or in the rivers flown over, which is not always easy and safe. The speed and direction of the wind determine the speed of the return flight. Against the wind, the pigeon flies low, hence physical dangers, electric wires, cars, etc., and pulls tacks like sailboats, which lengthens the distance traveled and all its consequences. The conjunction high temperature plus headwind is a negative data and potentially contains a great difficulty of the competition. If we add the rain, all the factors of the disaster come together. Rain, even intermittent, in the form of temporary showers, is then an aggravating factor. On the other hand, we can say that it has practically no impact in strong winds. One of the few certainties we have. There is never a bad race with a tailwind. The layer of mist is then only thin and the pigeons fly above it without difficulty. The postponement poses the problem of the maintenance of the pigeons on the place of release. First the truck. Anyone who has climbed into a truck with baskets of pigeons knows that the temperature there becomes unbearable very quickly. If the outside temperature is high, it will still faster. The dynamic ventilation of the truck is therefore an absolute requirement. The air movement must be, for a good truck of 4,000 pigeons, 93 cubic meters per minute. This assumes several fans of 35 to 40 centimeters in diameter in permanent operation. How many trucks yet approved by our national bodies are equipped in this way? It goes without saying that watering should be repeated several times a day. As far as food is concerned, those in charge must never forget that the pigeon having practically no physical activity while waiting for the release, it is important to bring him only what is necessary, that is to say 15 to 20 grams per day of mixture, i.e. one half tin, one half illiter, for a basket of 20 pigeons. Otherwise, if the wait is prolonged, we risk the appearance of the phenomena of acidosis with inability to fly, paralysis, etc. which eliminate competitors who have nothing to do with it. So, when you see empty baskets coming back with hundreds of corn seeds mixed with droppings and litter straw, you can say that the pigeons have been cared for generously, but despite common sense. A pigeon weighing 500 g absorbs, for itself alone, and at average ambient temperature, 
approximate 18 degrees Celsius, approximately 50 milliliters of drinking water. The body uses water in multiple organic phenomena. Digestion can only take place if the ration is diluted in a good quantity of water in which the nutrients are either dissolved or in fine suspension. At the level of the small intestine, these nutritive principles cross the intestinal wall and reach the blood circulation. The exterior of the intestine of a pigeon during digestion is traversed by many fine blood vessels. The residue is the intestinal part of the droppings, the urinary part is white, itself rich in water, 50%, even if it is normal, diarrheal, it is still much more watery. Respiration exports a lot of water in the form of water vapor, formed at the level of the alveoli and the walls of the air sacs. Finally, certain organic chemical reactions consume water, i.e. 22 to 25 g. If the body of the pigeon is well insulated by the plumage, therefore relatively insensitive to the outside temperature, and since the pigeon does not sweat, lack of sweat glands, the increased export of water in very hot weather occurs only by breathing. Between 15 and 30 degrees Celsius outside temperature, water requirements are doubled. Dryness is felt very quickly in the first airways and creates the thirst throat, always poorly supported. The work of the flight increases the respiratory rate. The drying out is even faster during the return flight, and this leads the pigeon to seek a watering point during long-distance competitions in hot weather. Depending on the pigeon's experience and willingness to return, this can take 30 seconds or several hours. This problem of watering during the return flight led amateurs to look for a way to avoid this can stop. We therefore prepared anti-thirst pills based on atropine, a belladonna powder from which atropine is extracted. Must it be said that in the vast majority of cases, the effect is strictly illusory and this for two reasons. The first is that, in long-distance competitions, the stay in the basket is always long, most often three nights in the basket. Everyone who has taken atropine granules knows that the anti-secretory effect is achieved within an hour. We are far from three days. Even if we have very coated dragées, none resists crushing in the gizzard, and it is at most a few hours after basketing that the effect will be obtained. And it lasts a few hours at most. The second is that thirst is the consequence of dehydration. Atropine temporarily suppresses the feeling of thirst, it does not suppress dehydration and all that this lack of organic water entails. We cannot imagine a lasting effect of a dehydrated body. So, no need to believe in anti-thirst pills. The first thing to do in order not to need it is to learn, from an early age, to drink from the basket. 80% of trained youngsters don't know it. The water content of the blood is a constant. Any dehydration of the blood leads to thirst. But in case of imbalance, in particular mineral, thirst appears because the body then tries to rebalance the mineral content of the blood by absorbing clear water. The consumption of excess salt, for example, at the time of breeding, raises the salt content of the blood beyond the normal, 9 g per liter, therefore creating the need for water. The pigeon drinks in excess until it regains normal blood, then returns the excess through his kidneys, which are very likely to be harmed it is an inundating diarrhea. It is the same with granular fertilizers, with in addition a great toxicity from which the liver and kidneys suffer more or less seriously. To conclude, once the pigeons are released, it is too late to do anything to change the course of the race. The very important decisions made by race controllers and liberators are the decisions that can change the future of this sport. Mistakes can and will happen but if every effort is made in the interests of the pigeons it will only be for the betterment of the sport.